Hi, friends. I'm Lori Palau, host of the popular weekly podcast, This Organized Life, founder of Simply Be Organized, and author of the book, Hot Mess, A Practical Guide to Getting Organized. For the past seven years, we've been sharing. Hi, everybody. Lori here, and I am so happy that you are kicking your week off with me. Well, that is, of course, if you're listening in real time. If you're not, I'm happy that you are joining me whenever or wherever you are. Um, if you are new to our show, our tip of the weeks are short form, actionable bite-sized nuggets of organization to kind of just get you through your day. And that's really what it's there for. It's not overly deep. It's not overly complicated. It's just kind of like the nuts and bolts. And here's an action plan for you. Um, if you want longer conversations, a little bit more organic um, ways to look at organization and kind of more of a holistic approach to health, wellness, entrepreneurship, parenting, all of the things, you're going to make want to make sure that you're tuning into our Thursday show, our This Organized Life full episodes. Um, that's when we have these really great, meaningful conversations with some really incredible people. And I learn a lot and hopefully you guys learn a lot, but I love these short little tip of the week episodes. And if you don't ever want to miss them, make sure that you head on over to our website, simplybeorganized.com, or you can just check in the show notes as well. And there should be a link for you to subscribe to get an email notification that um, with a transcript of each weekly episode. So again, we don't like email clutter. We don't like spamming you with a bunch of fluff, but I do love to just be able to just give gentle reminders and like, let people know, Hey, this is what we're talking about this week. So you can decide, is this something that you even want to listen to? I mean, obviously we love when you listen. I love when um, watching our download numbers go up. That is really good for us, for all podcasters. But I also want to make sure that you're getting value listening to episodes that really resonate with you. And so just by getting our, um, being on our email list allows us to send you a summary of what our episodes um, for that week are. And you can decide, hey, this is something that I really want to prioritize or like, eh, I'll get to it when I get to it. And we're cool with that because again, life is all about choices and priorities and, you know, making time for what matters to you most. So today is a really granular organizing tip. And again, I usually pull these tips of the week from the things that are happening in my own life. If you listen to last week, I was talking about cleaning the fridge, a really exciting thing that I did last weekend. Um, and in conjunction with that, um, I also was spending some time in my kitchen and I went through the exercise of ditching old mugs. Now, I don't know about you, but mugs in the, and coffee mugs, again, what we're talking, I don't know if there's like other terms, but you know, like a coffee cup, a mug, tea cup, whatever, um, are something that just seems to multiply in our house, sort of like gremlins. And I was trying to think in preparation of this episode of like, why are mugs like a pain point for a lot of people? Because oftentimes it's not just in my own house, but I'll go over to my friend's houses or I would go over to a client's house and their cabinets are like vomiting with different types of mugs. And I think it's because First of all, mugs are funny. Like a lot of times mugs with sayings, like they're cute or they're funny and they're inexpensive. So you could be on a vacation and they're a great souvenir or we all know teachers. That's oftentimes a teacher gift that you get. Um, but sometimes like I'll even find myself like at a random store and I'll see funny like saying and I'll just want to get it for a friend, which in reality, I'm like, she probably doesn't need another mug. Yes, it's a funny saying, but probably she doesn't need that. Um, and, but they're easy gifts. They're gifts for, you know, teenagers. They're good gifts for young adults. They're good for older people. They're good for men and women. It doesn't matter who you are. It's like a good generic gift. And so because of that, um, a lot of people have mug clutter, like it's a thing. Okay. And so how do you decide what you're going to keep, what you're going to get rid of? Are you going to throw them away? Are you going to donate them? What are we going to do? So I have a couple of rules. You know, I always tell you that organizing is personal. You have to do what makes sense for you um, in, you know, your own family and your own life. But I'm going to just, again, share with you some of my own tips and strategies. So first and foremost, I have the one, wait, I wrote it down. So it was, what do I call it? 
the one row rule. Okay, ready for it? The one row rule. So if you have your mugs in a cabinet on a shelf, if you've ever, and maybe your kitchen looks like this or not, but if you've ever opened it up and you have them double stacked so that you have mug on top of mug, I don't do that. That's like no bueno. And this is a rule that I use for cups as well. I don't double stack my cups. Unless you have a really, really large family, like there's obviously always some sort of exception to a rule, but for most average size families, I'm talking four, five, six people, you're going to be looking at having comfortably, depending on how big your mugs are, probably 12 to 15 mugs on one shelf that can sit comfortably, right? So again, depending on how wide and big your mugs are, you're probably going to fit five across and either two to three deep. That's probably, and I'm generalizing, some people's cabinets are a little bit more narrow, some people's are a little bit wider, but but the average that most people can fit are going to be somewhere 10 to 15. So if you are, again, depending on how frequently you are doing washing dishes, 10 to 15 mugs in rotation for a family of even say five should be more than enough. So that is my rule. So, okay, let's just say we're going with that rule and you have way more mugs than that. So what do you decide? What stays and what goes? Well, let's just start with what's going in the trash. Anything that's going in the trash is anything that's chipped or damaged. Just happened to us the other day. One of my favorite mugs had a chip right in the, right where you sip from. So I was like, as much as I really like this mug, it's, I could even try to fix it, but then I'm going to have glue right where I put my mouth and it's goes to the dishwasher and I have hot coffee. And I'm like, no, I just have to say, be like, oh, sorry, this mug lived its life and now it's time to go. So anything that's chipped, damaged, that goes. Okay. So that's first and foremost. Then you can go into the donate pile. Um, and the donate pile would be anything that you're not using for whatever reason. You either don't like it. Maybe it has a saying that was funny at some time and it's not funny now. Maybe it's something that's really too big. Like remember when those big friends mugs like from Central Park were popular and everyone had these and they're basically like the size of a cereal bowl. And you're like, okay, I'm not realistically drinking my coffee from that. So those will easily go. Or sometimes people give like small mugs, like maybe you like to drink from a heartier mug and this is just almost like, like a little teacup kind of a thing. And so you don't like them. So anything that's sized inappropriately for your habits and routines, <clears throat> then you're going to get rid of them. So you can donate them. Again, there's tons of different local shelters or organizations that take housewares. So you can absolutely donate them. And then the third category is mugs that are seasonal mugs. Like, I don't know about you, but we've got some Christmas mugs or Halloween mugs that we like to use, but only we only use them at certain times of the year. Well, just like anything else, I think when you look at your prime real estate, if your one shelf is your prime real estate, you need to make sure that the stuff that's getting used frequently is living on that shelf, plain and simple. Anything above and beyond that has to have another space to go. And so I, my rule of thumb is I like to keep seasonal mugs and this could go for plates as well, or any other like um, dish towels, anything like that. I keep them in the seasonal bin. So if I have like a Christmas dish towel, I don't keep it with dish towels. I keep it with Christmas, same with any other holiday. And so when it comes to my mugs, that's the rule of thumb that I subscribe to. So if we have specific winter mugs or Christmas mugs or whatever it is, or, you know, I just keep focusing it on Christmas because it's coming up down the pike. So it's on my brain, but you know what I mean? Any specific type of that you only are using at certain times of the year, I take that out of general rotation and put it in with the group of things that I'm going to access 
in preparation with those things. So if I know this is my Christmas bug, when I go to take out my Christmas decor, then I will put that into rotation. What I might then do is then temporarily remove a couple of other mugs, right? Because you're not going to remove them all, probably, unless you're like, I'm switching out all my stuff for, you know, a specific season. But more often than not, you're talking a couple mugs or whatever it is that you're looking for. So then just take a few of other ones so that you're sticking with your one row rule and just keep them cycled in. So that is, if you know that that's your baseline and you're going above it, then something else has to go. And that's really kind of where I'm, I'm not militant about like clothing one in one out, but when it comes to like my kitchen being organized, I am a little bit more, um, I am a little bit more strict, I guess, for lack of a better word, because I don't like to open up a cabinet and see like, especially breakables looking like they're going to topple over on me. So that's my tip for this week is to go through um, any of your old mugs. And again, if this isn't something that you struggle with, you can substitute it for a different category that may apply. Because again, you can apply these tips to other areas of your house. So you could apply it with, you know, platters or plates or bowls or whatever it looks like, um, wherever you have an excess of. So I hope you found this useful. If you did and you know somebody else that might benefit from this, please do me a favor, do them a favor, just click the little three buttons and just share the episode. You could do it right from your phone. You could share via text. You could be, share it via social media, whatever it is. We appreciate it. They appreciate it. It is the simplest way that you can show your appreciation for the work that we're doing here. Um, and it doesn't cost you a dime. And so we really, really do appreciate that. And again, if this is your first time tuning in, welcome, make sure to click that subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening or watching. We are here every Monday for our tips of the week and every Thursday for our long form conversation episodes. And so I hope to see you back on Thursday. And if not, I'll see you next week for another episode of I'll see you next week for another episode of this organized life.